Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. And we begin with late breaking news from the northeast side of the city. San Antonio police are on the scene for a shooting call in the 3900 block of Perrin Central. That is just south of Wurzbach Parkway. We don't have much information, but we did see the apparent victim being carried out on a stretcher, put into an ambulance and taken to a hospital. We do not know how badly they are hurt. A lot of police officers responding here. We have a crew on the way to get more information. The coronavirus pandemic forcing another form of a shutdown here in Texas. Today, Governor Greg Abbott issued an executive order which limits restaurant capacity to 50% beginning on Monday and also closes other businesses like bars and tube rentals starting today. Those measures come after Abbott says the COVID-19 positivity rate in the state increased above 10%. Devin Clark with how that's affecting business along rivers in New Braunfels. Aside from some rain today, Rivers and New Braunfels are not seeing much of a splash. Coley Reno owns Texas Tubes, a tube rental company along the Colmau River. I already had people in the river today. That is until he learned about Governor Greg Abbott's new executive order, closing bars, limiting restaurant capacity, and closing tubing outfitters. Deja vu for Reno, who just reopened on May 8th after shutting down on March 23rd because of the pandemic. The first thing I thought about was my employees. You know, I got about 30 employees, 31 employees. Um, you know, they're out of work now. Corby Circle drove four and a half hours from Wiley, Texas, northeast of Dallas, hoping to cool off in the water, only to realize a change of plans. Well, we're just kind of driving around looking for something to do, but it looks like everything seems to be closed. The reason, a surge in coronavirus cases. Today, Colmau County officials announced 48 new confirmed and probable cases of COVID-19, bringing the all-time county total to 552. Officials say a large percentage of the new cases are comprised of residents in their 20s and 30s. While Reno understands the concern, and the need for some businesses to close, he doesn't feel that businesses that provide access to rivers should be included in the group. Uh, I think this is one of the safest things you can do. I'd much rather do this and be outdoors in the wind and and uh, the sunshine than, than be indoors anywhere. Really no telling when these businesses along the river will be able to reopen, but in the meantime, if you are in Colmau County and you'd like to get tested for the coronavirus, you can call the local COVID-19 hotline at 830-221-1120. Reporting in Colmau County, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. The city of New Braunfels announced that river parks along the Comal and the Guadalupe are closed and the annual 4th of July fireworks display at Landa Park has been postponed. No new date has been announced. Governor Abbott also ordering bars closed as of noon today and starting Monday restaurants will have to limit their capacity from 75% back down to 50%. Jesse Degriado says some owner, some owners are more understanding in this situation than others. There's no doubt what bar owners in Bernie think about the governor's latest executive order. What this does to my business, this kills me, this devastates me. I had three hours to close my business again. This is total BS. I understand the panic that's out there, but we're in Bernie. As of Friday morning, Kendall County had 43 cases of COVID-19, nearly half of those in Bernie but far less than in San Antonio and other urban areas. Base your shutdowns on those areas. Bernie doesn't have a problem. This is my life and now I can't do what I need to be doing. The governor's in a difficult position. Uh, you know, I, that's the position I would not want to be in right now. Um, while that from an owner of a popular San Antonio restaurant. It's always difficult to go backwards. At the same time, you know, we, um, we respect and understand the governor's orders. Business, he says, is down again due to the spike in cases. It was rebounding following what he says were a nightmarish first few months. Now, instead of hiring. You know, there again, we got to cut hours and maybe cut jobs again. And he says relying on curbside orders for its business. Jesse yeah. Degollado, KSAT 12 News. The head of the San Antonio Metro Health District is stepping down. Dr. Don Emmerich, who started her job in late January, less than two weeks before the first coronavirus evacuees arrived at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland, handed in her resignation letter yesterday. Her last day will now be July 3rd. The city manager said the city manager and the assistant city manager, Colleen Bridger, who is the former Metro Health Director and who had also been planning to resign next month, they will both develop a plan for moving forward. The mayor promised a strong response to this pandemic will continue. 
you know, again, we're not going to miss a beat in terms of the response and the work that the Metro Health Department does. Uh, this is really, um, you know, an ongoing uh, pandemic response, and, and we're not going to we're not going to stop it. In her letter, Dr. Emmerick also urged the city to appoint a person of color to replace her, saying residents and the Metro Health workforce deserve a leader who can effectively relate to their personal experiences and be trusted to deconstruct systemic racism. Frustrated by what she was seeing in our community, the doctor became the patient. On her Facebook page today, University Hospital Dr. Tommy Austin had herself intubated live to show what can happen to people who come down with COVID-19 and why you need to wear a mask. The chief executive nurse used the hospital simulation room to show the entire process live from the IVs to the tube down the throat. Did it hurt? Uh, it didn't feel good. <laughs> we all have choices, and this is one of the reasons why we choose to wear masks. You know, I feel like there had to be some type of shock factor for people because we were hearing such irrational things about why don't why they didn't want to wear a mask, and we just wanted to show here's what could happen. What was the experience like? I felt a lot of, of uh, loss of control, and and although the experience of having the tube placed in was not was not a good experience. The loss of control to me was the was the bigger issue. And I just wanted to demonstrate to everyone that wearing a mask was had nothing to do with politics. Um, that uh, truly, if you do not wear a mask, that uh, being intubated or being placed on a ventilator is is an option uh, if you should get COVID nineteen. And so I wanted people to see how uh, how difficult it is. We want to keep ourselves safe our loved ones safe, our patients safe, and our community safe. Thank you for doing what's right. Yeah, Dr. Austin told me they are seeing from babies to 100-year-olds come down with COVID, and now she can put herself in their place. She hopes others will soon see that wearing a mask may just save the life of a coworker, a friend, or someone you love. That's why she says she wears a mask. Bear County deputies dealing with more than just an average accident scene in the western part of the county. Investigators say someone shot the man behind the wheel, causing him to crash in the 9800 block of Misty Plain Drive. And as Katrina Weber reports, the evidence of that shooting wasn't too far away. A truck knocked out of its place by a car out of control. The damage, though, took a back seat for Bear County Sheriff's investigators to what was done to the driver. When I opened the door and I was walking, then I heard a lot of screaming, and then I walked down here, and that's why I saw the dude laying on the ground. The man who Lynn Johnson saw on the ground in the 9800 block of Misty Plain Drive had been behind the wheel of the car. Deputies say someone shot him before 5 this morning, causing him to lose control. The bullets hit him in the back and grazed his head. Even from her home down the street, Johnson could tell this was no ordinary accident. As soon as I heard the gunshots, and then as soon as I touched my doorknob, then I heard the crash. So I'm sure that it was related. While Johnson had a hunch right away what this was all about, some people thought this initially was just a crash. In fact, the owner of that truck told us he thought the driver of the car was about to get out and run away. Instead, he ended up in a hospital. Deputies took his two teenage passengers in for questioning. They told them they were in that area to meet up with someone to exchange items. Then that person started shooting. Deputies also found some clues on their own. Half a dozen shell casings just around the corner, telling them that is where the shooting happened. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Time saver traffic right now. Let's go to I-35 and Brooklyn. Get a good view of both the upper and lower decks on this Friday. Not a lot of traffic out there and certainly not a lot of traffic trouble to tell you about. Uh, just like with COVID and with the center dust, people are going to experience shortness of breath, coughing, running nose, the same flu-like symptoms like you do with COVID. But the big difference with an allergy uh, attack, as I would say, is you don't spike a fever because it's not a virus. So it just affects the mast cells, which makes the body cough, sneeze, shortness of breath. When COVID is actually a virus that floods the body, so the body fights it off by raising the temperature. 
Important to know the difference. We've been talking about this you see here for weeks now, Saharan dust. The KSAT weather team has been tracking it as it makes its way to the U.S. from across the globe, and now it is here. We've heard from health experts about how it can cause or exacerbate respiratory problems. So if you notice that haze out there or feel your allergies acting up, it could be because of the annual return of that Saharan dust. And speaking of that, as you take a live look outside with live cam, it looks a bit a hazy little bit, yeah. here, but it's I think it's been harder to notice the dust today because of the clouds and all the rain and the rain. Yes. Yeah. yeah, Justin Horn texted me about an hour ago and and because we've been kind of thinking maybe we would get some muddy rain today and he says he thinks maybe there was some muddy rain on his wife's car, but he wasn't sure if you got a picture of that or experience that today from the rain we had around. Uh, do let us know. So the dust not as noticeable today, but I do expect that it will be more noticeable as we get into the weekend, especially tomorrow with seeing uh, a bit more clearing and less cloud cover than what we saw today. 20% chance of a shower tomorrow, 30% chance of a shower or not severe storm as we get into Sunday afternoon. So if you enjoyed today, I certainly did. It won't be like that this weekend. We'll return to more summer like weather over the next couple of days. As far as what's going on out there right now, I think we are past our time of a good chance of rain here in South Texas. We're going to continue to see the shower activity that's out there now really continue to wrap up and dwindle as we get into the late evening hours. Temperatures in and around San Antonio are in the 70s, but if you zoom out more, places where there has not been as much cloud cover and rain, Carrizo Springs, Del Rio, they are still in the 90s, so a big spread in temperatures depending on where you are. We've got a few more showers moving in through the hill country, but again, those will continue to fizzle out as we get closer and closer to sunset that nonetheless, we'll keep in a 20% chance of an isolated shower through the evening, but for the most part, warm and muggy to finish out your Friday. Tomorrow, more sunshine and back to more June like temperatures. 93 your high tomorrow with just a 20% chance of a shower through the early afternoon. Uh, we will uh, take another look at the full forecast coming up later in the show. Another closer look at that Saharan dust as well. in hospitalizations, 71 more patients in the hospital tonight after 73 more from yesterday. And so that brings us just about to 700 COVID positive patients in local hospitals. That is an alarming jump from just two weeks ago. We do also have uh, 221 patients in intensive care, which is up 19 from yesterday. And tonight we have exceeded 100 people on ventilators for the first time, 117 COVID positive patients on ventilators, which is up 23 from yesterday. In terms of capacity, the number of ventilators available has dipped to 66%. The hospitals themselves with staffed beds remain at 26%. And so the hospital system as a whole continues to be under significant stress. Today, I do want to make sure you know the governor updated his executive orders, which has allowed us to update our local orders uh, with enforcement. So as of noon today, people may not visit bars except except for drive-through, pickup, or delivery options for food and drinks authorized by the Texas Alcohol and Beverage, Beverage Association Commission. Uh, beginning Monday, also, restaurants are limited to 50% capacity. Rafting and tubing businesses must close, and all hospitals in San Antonio must postpone elective surgeries and procedures. Um, this is an important step, and as you know, it's a rollback from where we were previously, which has to, which clearly indicates that we have seen a surge in cases across the state of Texas that we have to do everything we do, everything we can to keep under control. I do also want to let you know, beginning daybreak tomorrow, Saturday, in city uh, in public parks, city and county parks, we will prohibit gatherings of more than 10 people uh, in any city, public, uh, county, park, or plaza. We'll also not reopen pools as scheduled. Splash pads and pools were scheduled to be open next Friday, but we are going to uh, postpone those uh, for uh, future notice, and we'll let you know when those uh, get back on track. Judge Wolf. Yeah, thank Thanks, Mayor. Let me first of all thank the hospitals. We were on a conference call, the mayor and I, with them just about an hour ago, and they're going to extraordinary measures, somewhere to between 15 to 20 percent of their patients now are COVID related. They've had to bring on more nurses. They've had to work more shifts, uh, but they're doing that. And, uh, and, and we want to thank them very much because we know that's a strain on them financially as well as uh, putting a lot of their uh, 
our health care workers in danger, and, 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 and it's just a shame that this is happening, but it is, and I want to thank them for that. Uh, I was talking to Craig Boyne today, who's the CEO of HEB, and since we started this thing uh, Monday with uh, employers mandating them to have face masks, 81 percent of their stores now are covered by that. And he's very pleased that that's being done. They're working with uh, other counties to, to have them also do the same thing that the larger counties have done. I want to uh, thank Kathy Barrett for this uh, baseball scarf. But the main thing about the baseball scarf, it says right on there, uh, Yogi Bear quote, it ain't over till it's over. And that's exactly what's happening right now with COVID. It's not over. And we've still got a long way to go to conquer it. It's a good bipartisan effort uh, now that's really, really coming together. Uh, I do want to thank Governor Abbott uh, for stepping up and making some hard decisions. I want to thank uh, Speaker Bonin, Republican Speaker of the House. And I, I was really taken with his remarks. He said, I have become increasingly infuriated by so-called advocates who are ditching the mask in the middle of a pandemic as an expression of freedom and liberty while, expre while expressly killing the freedom and liberties we cherish. So thank, thank him for really stepping it up and make it really clear. It was, a, it was a great quote that was sent to me today by Dan Peavy. And it's an old Zula term called Ubuntu. And that term is really what we're talking about here is humanity for others. What we're all trying to do today is not just for ourselves. It's also trying to help everybody else here in San Antonio and stop spreading the disease, whether we're symptomatic or non-symptomatic. So let's practice that really, really great uh, quote, humanity for others. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Judge. And, and so, again, best thing to do if you don't need to be somewhere, essentially stay home, always maintain physical distance, and mask up San Antonio. Thank you for what you're doing. I do want to let you know uh, another, um, uh, another metric that we are watching that has steadily gone up over the last uh, several days and the last couple of weeks is the, percent uh, is the percentage of admissions that are now COVID-19 related in our hospitals. It's crawled up uh, from, from a low point up to now today, 20%. So uh, that is a concern from a capacity standpoint, and we've got to all do our part now to limit the spread. Be sure to subscribe to the latest uh, COVID-19 updates by texting COSAGOV to 55000. You can also check the latest on the website at covid19.sanantonio.gov. As I mentioned, uh, Jennifer Harriet is here. For the All right, first the time, the number of people on ventilators yeah. has exceeded 100, 117 people now on ventilators. That was one of the biggest statistics that really made a jump that the mayor mentioned today. Yeah, and when you say ventilators, these are people who need help breathing. A machine is breathing for they them. They cannot breathe on their own. They are in the very serious of serious conditions. 221 people are in intensive care right now. 699 people are in the hospital as we speak. 405 new cases. We are now at 8,857, and there is one new death to report in the last 24 hours. Also, uh, the mayor pointing out the gatherings of 10 or more prohibited in city parks or plazas starting tomorrow. Those are some of the important changes that we should note. Of course, those are made possible by the new executive orders from the governor that he handed down today. Those included, as we have mentioned here, but do want to mention again, bars are now closed. Restaurants must go back to operating at 50% capacity down from 75 where they were. No elective surgeries in Bear County. That's affecting both us, Dallas County, Harris County, Travis County. It shows you that we're all experiencing major metro areas Areas in Texas are experiencing this surge. Also, no pools in San Antonio and splash pads. We know the kids want to get out and go play, but those will not be opening as scheduled right now. And sometimes it has been a bit of an adversarial relationship between the state of Texas and the city and county. That does not seem to be the case so much anymore. As a matter of fact, County Judge Nelson Wolf saying he thinks there is a good bipartisan effort taking place right now, and he especially pointed out the governor and the House Speaker who came forward today and said Texas needs to stick together and make this thing happen. And he feels like there's a bipartisan effort now to curb the surge that we're seeing. He said he thanked them for stepping up and making some tough decisions. We'll be right back.
doing good, you know, as good as we can be with these times. But, you know, it's always good to, you know, chat and wrap it up with one of the homies. Rudy Gay joined his fellow UConn alum, Karan Butler, to talk about police brutality and racism in America in big board sports. With the NBA season resuming in late July, the NBA and the NBA Players Association are doing all they can to try to protect everyone going to Orlando. Today, the NBA and the Players Association announced COVID-19 test results conducted on 302 NBA players on June 23rd, and 16 players have tested positive for the virus. Any player who tested positive will remain in self-isolation until he satisfies public health protocols for discontinuing isolation and has been cleared by a physician. The league did not announce results results of testing on staffers and other members of team travel parties, all of whom are also part of the mandatory testing program. Rudy Gay is the latest member of the Spurs to open up and talk about racism and police brutality. Recently, Gay spoke with former NBA player Karan Butler about these topics. Butler has been hosting a series of talks for the NBA and posting them on Twitter. When Gay first heard about the death of George Floyd at the hands of a white police officer, Gay said he was numb to it because it happened again. But then he realized that way of thinking needs to change. Even the way I was thinking was wrong. You know, obviously that man lost his life and, and, and so many of our brothers and sisters have lost their lives. But it's, that's, that shouldn't be the norm. So the big, like, that's the biggest takeaway from it. It was like, yo, this is us. This is what we got. This is what we deal with. And this is how I've been raised to, 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 to be at a point where you know that this is happening. And, um, and, and what we do to prevent it is to stay away or not go in these areas or, you know, like the video that, that LeBron posted of just hiding from the police, you know, and they're there to protect and serve. Um, it's just, I mean, it's, it's mind blowing once you sit back and think about it. Gay also said the stereotype cycle can be broken. Wagner alumni Kiana Williams saw her junior season at Stanford cut short due to COVID-19, but not before she turned in a fantastic game-winning three at the buzzer to Colorado back in February. She made a three pointer tying the game with 12 seconds left moments later she stole the ball and turned out the lights with a 40 foot prayer we caught up with her at alamo city all-stars sportsplex where she broke down that awesome play one thing about tara she she thinks ahead of the game so we were in a timeout she's calling the play and uh we're talking about what we're going to do if i make the shot if i don't make the shot so I made the shot and we knew not to foul because I had tied the game. So, you know, we're matching up, trying to get back on defense. And uh, they had a, a mental break or the, their big, I think she picked up the ball and um, she threw it away and she threw it toward our basket. And I looked at the clock, had to let it go. And next thing I know, I'm at the bottom of a dog pile. <laughs> Kiana instantly smiled when we mentioned that play and she remembers it like it was yesterday. She'll never forget that play. Let's, let's admit it, Larry. I mean, right. that's a, you, those just don't happen every day. No, and at the bottom of a dog pile. Come on, that's yeah. so cool. <laughs> exactly. Thanks, Larry. You got it. We'll be right back. Like so many other things during these times, events may have been canceled, postponed, maybe even gone virtual. But even during this pandemic, June is Pride Month and the LGBTQ community is celebrating that. So here to join us for our KSAT Q&A today, Dr. Amy Stone, professor in sociology and anthropology with Trinity University. Thanks for being with us, doctor. It's great to be here. Let's talk about first how Pride got started. So Pride is actually uh, was to commemorate the Stonewall Riots, um, which was a series of protests at the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village in New York City. On June 28, 1969, police raided the inn as it was very common to do. Uh, it was very common for police to raid gay bars at the time. And they would often um, frighten the patrons. They would often arrest them, put their name in the paper. They would often lose their job. It was, it was a pretty big deal um, in the 60s. And instead of just kind of meekly going along with it, the patrons at the Stonewall Inn instead resisted. Uh, and they, they rioted for three days in Greenwich Village. Um, and that was sort of the beginning of kind of resistance to particularly um, police involvement in gay bars, but also um, just kind of 
expectations that people were going to remain closeted. So our understanding of what it means to have pride really comes from this time period where the activists that kind of came out of that set of riots said basically like, we don't want to be ashamed of being gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender anymore. We want to feel pride about it and be proud of ourselves for it. You know, there's there's usually a big pride fest that takes place. You've got the big parade that takes place down uh, Main Avenue. That is not happening this year, obviously, because of all the concerns about COVID. But you believe it's still important to celebrate, especially with some of the recent gains that have been made by the LGBTQ plus community, correct? I think even you know, sometimes people say to me like, well, you know, same sex marriage happened. And now there was this big court ruling about employment non-discrimination, where it's illegal to fire people in the U.S. for being lesbian, gay, bisexual or transgender anymore. So that's new. Um, so people say, like, well, you know, aren't we done then? Like we're we've made it. But um, I think there's a couple of reasons why it's really important to celebrate pride, especially right now in the middle of this sort of coronavirus um, pandemic. There's a lot of virtual pride activities this weekend. Um, just a, a quick Google search will show up, up all kinds of different things, um, really amazing um, activities and drag shows and whatnot online. So for anyone and everyone stuck at home, that's um, that may be fun, you know? So on top of the pandemic that we're all living through, there is also uh, pride is happening during this nationwide push for racial racial equality. And you say that actually LGBTQ rights have a connection to racial justice. We really can't have one without the other. So for the last uh, three years, I've been working with a community group called, uh, or help, helping lead a community group called Strengthening Colors of Pride here in San Antonio. Last year, we collected a survey of um, almost 1,800 people um, who are LGBTQ living in San Antonio and sort of the sort of surrounding counties. And we found out that one in five LGBTQ people that we surveyed has been homeless at some point. And for people who are Black or Latinx and LGBTQ, that number is closer to one in three. Right. So if we're just paying attention to discrimination based on sexuality, we're missing the fact that some people are experiencing a lot of racism, too. And that's shaping their well-being and their outcomes in life um, in a really dramatic way. Yeah. Right? Just, so when we talk about violence, we need to talk about black transgender women in violence as well. Right. So racial justice isn't accomplished until black transgender women are also safe. Yeah, absolutely. That's a very good point. And, and you know, you, you bring up the point about homelessness as well. I mean, there's actually a separate wing at Haven for Hope for kids that have basically been kicked out of their home because they've come out to their parents. And that, I mean, that's kind of resiliency is a big part of what you're looking at in this study, correct? Yes, yes. So we're looking at some of the things that shape kind of um, people's lives right now, their health and well-being, but also the ways that LGBTQ people in San Antonio are incredibly resilient. They have a lot of community connections. They have a lot of people in their lives who care about them um, and are very powerful people. So we've been kind of looking at both. If you want to know more, we're having a town hall next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Um, there's more information on the Strengthening Colors of Pride website and also on our, all of our social media. Great. Good information to look up. And as you said, if you're wanting to take part in a pride celebration, there's lots happening virtually that you can uh, take part in. Dr. Stone, thanks so much for being with us this evening. No, thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thanks Thank for you. your time. We'll be right back. It is a new exciting project that we're undertaking here at KSAT 12. It's called KSAT Explained, where we get to dive deeper into certain topics. Uh, you know, and, and this week is a very important topic and very timely. Absolutely. We're talking about mail-in voting in the new episode that came out just yesterday. And the importance of mail-in voting is the fact that we're all about to do something we've never done before, which is vote during a pandemic. And that has raised a lot of legitimate concerns about whether gathering in long lines, everyone touching the same voting um, tablets and screens, is that going to be a risk to our health? 
during this pandemic and only to help spread the virus. So there has been a big push to allow more people to vote by mail. That's already allowed in Texas for some folks, but not everybody. So there's a push uh, to make that even wider, a broader net of people who can vote by mail. But of course, now there has been a push back against that. Yeah, the Supreme Court just moments ago ruling that Demo ruling against Democrats who were asking for people to be able to say their fear of coronavirus and COVID-19 is why they wanted to mail in their ballots. Uh, that was the latest twist in this entire thing. But it, it's, it is really about can you use COVID as a legitimate reason why you don't feel like going to the ballot box. And currently under Texas law, you cannot. But there have been lawsuits filed over that very issue, both at the federal level and at the state level. So this episode of Case That Explains gives you a timeline of where we are now in this legal fight, uh, tells you exactly the arguments for and against mail-in voting, and then also what changes you can expect to see when you do go vote. Because again, we're days away from early voting starting and the primary runoffs. And then of course, we have the main event coming up in November, uh, all while dealing with this pandemic. So we lay all of that out in this episode, which is up now. Yep. And it is on demand, so you can watch it anytime you want. It's on our website at ksat.com or if you stream on the KSAT TV app. Yep, and there are two episodes that are out right now that you can catch online. You got it. All right, let's go back to Katie Blake in the studio to explain our weather situation for the weekend, Katie. Thank you, Steve and Myra. We spent most of the day here in San Antonio in the 70s because of the cloud cover and rain this morning, but we did briefly see our temperatures jump into the mid 80s this afternoon. So our official high temperature for the day here in San Antonio will be 85 degrees. That was during the three, four o'clock hour this afternoon before that second area of rain moved back in to drop us into the 70s now and through 4 p.m. at the airport here in town. 0.45 inches of rain on the day. We will take it, that's for sure. So limited to the 70s and 80s here in the Alamo City today. That will not be the case this weekend. Weekend, you'll be feeling more like summer even by tomorrow afternoon. We'll talk more about your weekend forecast and the Saharan dust coming up. Leave it to NASA to have a contest that is out of this world, of course. NASA is looking for a new toilet design for its astronauts. It goes without saying this commode needs to work in microgravity and lunar gravity. Yeah, and don't close the lid on your chances. Hey, yo. People who want to take a shot at this need to keep it simple. Blueprints that are pretty straightforward. Complicated and time intensive projects will likely be flushed. There are two categories in this contest, <laughs> technical and junior. I'm surprised there's not also plumber, but all entrants need to be at least 18. One of the top prizes, $35,000. Imagine some of the entries they're going to get from people who are in no way taking that seriously. Yeah. Independence Day could shape up to be the biggest road trip event of the year. Despite the global pandemic, travel data company Arrivalist predicts more than 36 million Americans will hit the road for the July 4th holiday weekend. That's about 11% less than last year. During the holiday weekend in 2019, the American Automobile Association predicted 41 million travelers. Yeah, the pandemic expected to slow down travel for the entire summer. AAA says Americans will take 700 million trips in July, August and September. That is 120 million fewer than last year. The decline mostly because of reduced air, bus, rail and cruise travel. To be or not to be, that is the question. It's a famous question, of course, from a famous play, Hamlet. But the casting of the lead role is also prompting another question. Isn't Ian McKellen a little old to be playing the title role? McKellen is 81. Hamlet is 30. But McKellen is getting ready to tackle the role again. He already played the part 50 years ago, but it seems the Royal Theater is making moves to be more age blind. He's played Magneto and Gandalf, <laughs> so he's kind of perfect for a revisionist <laughs> Hamlet. No word on when the curtains will open, but rehearsals are set to begin later this month. Steve, you know I'm a Gandalf fan. I know you are. Bina coladas might be on the menu for tonight's virtual happy hour. This weekend kicks off with National Coconut Day. Okay, mm. this day is still pretty new. It started just last year by the Coconut Coalition of the Americas, which has only been around itself since 2017. It says the day and coalition exist to promote the coconut and its health benefits. Coconuts aren't exactly nuts. They're technically dry droops. Hmm. 
Loosely defined, they could be called a fruit, a nut, or a seed. People can be very divided about coconut. Whether We're, they like it or not? Yes. Like on your, like a coconut I am, cream pie, I am pro stuff like that? coconut mm -hmm. all the way. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? I could take it or leave it. I need you to take a stand. <laughs> I'm wishy-washy. <laughs> the best coconut use is the, the drinks. Right, well, <laughs> put a what, straw in it. Do you like little, coconut? Little Are you like mm -hmm. coconut? stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't go out of my way to try it. How about that? Like if I see so coconut on it, it's not like, oh, I got to have that. You know what's good? Some toasted coconut flakes <laughs> with the chia This will work out then because I got to have it. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's all yours. Sorry, Katie. Coconut and saying? chia seeds. Are you talking about healthy coconut things? No. You're not talking about like almond joys. You're going the much uh, <laughs> coconut and chia joy. seeds. I said the, the drinks, the tropical drinks that they make out of the half coconut with the straw and the the I've never umbrella. had one of those. They always look fun. Highly recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Would recommend 10 of 10. Yes, for sure, for sure. Uh, let's talk about this Saharan dust. So it moved in yesterday, but it wasn't overwhelmingly noticeable today because we had a lot of cloud cover and of course we had the rain and I just snagged this satellite image from NOAA that's taken this evening and as you look down in the far southern Gulf of Mexico it's very easy to see where that dust is that brown color but as you get up closer to the Texas Gulf Coast we've got a lot of cloud cover here if we didn't have the cloud cover it would be much easier to pick out exactly where uh, that dust kind of cut off is but as you look up from South Texas up to Austin things still look a bit kind kind of brownish there or muddy. The satellite picture isn't quite as clear. And that's our indication that we do have that Saharan dust in place over South Texas. And this picture of live cam, it does just almost kind of look a bit hazy out there. We've got a lot of high cloud cover around. And so that also kind of just distorts the view. If we had clear blue skies, it would be very easy to see uh, this dust. But I would say it looks pretty hazy out there this evening. Our sensor at the airport picking up on those high clouds. So reading cloudy for now, 78 degrees dew point in the upper 60s. It is muggy out there, but look at this temperature spread. Uh, this is fairly impressive because of the cloud cover and the rain. We've got some folks in the upper 70s and low 80s, especially long and east of 35, but off to the west where you guys have seen a lot more sun and not as much rain today. You're in the upper 80s, even the 90s there in Valverde County, 95 in Del Rio for now. but. Unlike our air temperatures, our dew points across the board are very elevated in the upper 60s and low 70s, so it is certainly humid out there this evening. Radar much more quiet than it was earlier in the day. May have wanted a little bit of rain to continue into the evening, but we're really seeing activity starting to fizzle out now. Even the showers that were moving northwest into the hill country there into Kerr County, just south of Fredericksburg, are starting to wind down. But we do have another batch of showers and storms trying to work north. I think this will also lose a lot of its gusto, especially once we get past sunset as we get into the 8 o'clock hour this evening. But as this continues to move north, some of our southernmost counties here uh, could see some of these thunder showers move in this evening. So we will leave in a mention of an isolated shower or storm through the late evening hours. But all things considered, overnight rainfall will really start to fizzle out. We could start with a few sprinkles and stray showers tomorrow, especially up near the Edwards Plateau. Tomorrow afternoon, majority of us stay dry. An isolated shower possible east of 35, but tomorrow will be a much more sunny and hot day than what we saw today. I actually expect our best chance of a shower or storm to come back in on Sunday, but still just a 30% chance coverage wise to see that as we get into the back half of the weekend. So right now we're centered between two areas of high pressure that has allowed for our rain today. As we get into Sunday, we'll have a weak piece of energy drop into far west Texas. That's why I think we have just a slightly better chance to see another shot at rain on Sunday. After that, the heat high moves back in and our weather pattern will be very summer like next week. So we'll look at your day tomorrow, mostly cloudy 70s in the morning up to 93 tomorrow afternoon with things probably looking a bit more hazy tomorrow than they did today. And that could continue into Sunday as well. Next week, very summer like rain chances fall out of the forecast and we'll be climbing back into the upper 90s. Steve Myra. All right, thanks, Katie. In case you missed it, coming up next.
Governor Greg Abbott has issued an executive order in an effort to contain the spread of COVID-19. This new order requires all bars that receive more than 51% of their sales from alcohol must close today at noon, but the gates stay open for delivery and takeout. And after expanding to 75% starting Monday, restaurants cannot exceed 50% occupancy and outdoor gatherings of 100 or more people must be approved. The director of the San Antonio Metro Health District leaving the job amid a surge in COVID-19 cases. Dr. Don Emmerich handed in her resignation letter yesterday on the same day that Bear County saw its biggest spike in cases so far. At the Tuesday night briefing on the pandemic, Emmerich was visibly frustrated as she talked about managing testing. I'm angry. <laughs> I'm tired. And it shouldn't be this way. Woo! I don't get emotional on this thing, but I'm emotional. San Antonio police looking for a suspect in a shooting that happened east of downtown overnight. Around 11.30 p.m., SAPD says the suspect approached a 20-year-old man and tried to rob him. That's when the victim tried to run away. Police say the suspect started shooting and hit the victim in the ear. The man was treated at the scene by EMS. Detectives are now investigating this incident. Now, a crucial conversation about domestic violence. A couple of hours ago, KSAT hosted a public town hall organized in conjunction with the San Antonio Metro Health District. The hour-long event highlighting the largest collaborative response to Bear County's serious domestic violence problem, which grows, it seems, more rampant every year. You can watch the entire town hall on our website. It's at ksat.com slash domestic violence. Cloudy, cool, and rainy today, but we return to summer-like weather this weekend. Afternoon temperatures low to mid-90s, and I think you'll notice things a bit more hazy, especially tomorrow as we see some more sunshine. And next week, very summer-like, sunny and high temperatures climbing into the upper 90s. Guys? By the way, Ian McClellan played Magneto, <laughs> not Magneto. Not Magneto. I have never seen an X-Man movie. If that not wasn't, a fan of X-Men or Coconut. If that wasn't obvious. Sheesh. Do you like pina coladas?